If you're in Proverbs 26, let's go to verse number 20. Proverbs 26, verse number 20. Probably wish there was some more Merle in this message tonight, but there's that was this morning. Proverbs 26, verse 20, the Bible says, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So, where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. Let's pray. God, we love you. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for how your word is there to encourage us. I'm thankful for how it is there to guide us in our life. And Lord, so many times it's there to correct us. And Lord, I pray that as we dive into your word tonight that you would help us. And where we need correcting, I pray that you would reveal that to us. And God, I pray that you would help us to make the changes that your Holy Spirit directs us to make. And God, we love you, and we pray that you will bless this time now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When I was in high school, I went to a Christian school in Texas, and uh, by the time I graduated, there was only 11 of us in our Christian uh, school, our senior class. And my last name is McLean, and so it was that I was right in the middle of the class. And uh, for our graduation, there was not an, a middle aisle. There was just one center section. And I remember all of the graduates would sit on that front row. And so there was five people to my right, and there was five people to my left, and I was the one right smack dab in the middle. And there are some things, Chandler, you probably could think of some. There are some messages in your life that you'll never forget. And the commencement address at my high school graduation was given by Dr. David Gibbs, and it is one that I will never forget. And he used this verse, Proverbs 26, verse 20, but he only used the first half of the verse. He used, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. And that is a correct, that is an accurate statement to make. And so he preached on that statement, as you all know, Dr. David Gibbs does, and he just expounded this great life truth to keep adding to your fire. And while that truth is a good truth, he, he was telling us as graduates going out into the world to never let your fire die, to, to always keep it kindled. I've, I've taken that with me. It's one of those messages I'll never forget. And just a couple, a few years ago, I was reading and I got to this verse. And in most, almost every one of my Bibles, that verse is underlined. And I got to it and I was like, man, I know how he preached it. And it was a great message. But the second half of the verse is the spiritual truth that's trying to be taught. Second half of the verse, it says, So, where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. And so I got to looking at that and just wondering what in the world exactly is a talebearer. And there might be people here tonight who just, you read your Bible and you just gloss over these words or you just don't think to look them up. You don't think to, to really study out what it means. So I, I looked it up. And for those of you who maybe you were like me and you didn't know what a talebearer was, this is what Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines a talebearer as. It is a person who officiously tells tales. That word officious means to be busy or intermeddling in affairs in which one has no concern. It's a whisperer, a slanderer, one who travels about telling tales. He is one who carries a tale from one person to the next, from one person to the next, and from one person to the next. They are just bearing these tales. They're telling them everywhere as they go, officiously, viciously, slandering, whispering. A slanderer, if you don't know what a slanderer is, a slanderer is a defamer. It's one who injures another by maliciously reporting something to his prejudice. Sean, if I were to go to you and I have a prejudice against someone else, I'm going to tell you my side of the story and highlight all of their negative features to my prejudice to make you think ill of someone else. I'm not going to highlight any of their good, any of their there are positive traits, just the negative ones. I want to plant that seed. I'm going to tell you something. I want, I'm going to tail bear something to you 
to get you on my side to think the same negative way that I think about this person. Forget all of the good that they've done. I'm just going to show you my prejudice and the evil and the negative that's in my heart. And I'm going to plant that seed in your heart. And I think we're going to find throughout later parts of the Bible that you're going to go and tell somebody else what I told you. Because that's in our human nature. God put this message on my heart a couple years ago. Pastor Chad knew. Pastor John knew. Pastor John went out of town. I was going to preach. It was a Sunday night. And there was testimonies and testimonies. I got like 10 minutes to preach that night. And it was just obvious that wasn't the message that I was supposed to preach. God put this message on my heart a few weeks ago when Pastor John asked me to preach. And I have tried everything in my being to not preach this message. But God has this message on my heart. It's not directed at any person. But I was praying today in my office. God, I pray that you would use this message. God, let it speak to our hearts. Let us stir us to a place of repentance. Let it help someone. I, I prayed that prayer. Then I was sitting there and I just said, God, let it help me. Because as we look at this, every single one of us should be convicted. What's a tail bearer? Someone who's whispering, someone who's slandering, someone who's going about from person to person telling these things to their prejudice. Not the whole truth, just what they want to show you, what's in their heart to show you. The very core of what it is, it's gossiping. It's what we'd call it in the New Testament. It's lying. And so tonight, I want to preach this message. Let's talk about the tailbearer. The tailbearer is the one who wants to talk. So let's, as a church, let's talk about the tailbearer. If you have your Bibles, let's flip over to Proverbs chapter 6. As I was thinking about the tailbearer these last few weeks, just studying this again, going back over it, I thought, really, there's, there's three sides to tailbearing. There's the one who is tailbearing, that's the tailbearer. He's going about telling other people, okay? That's the one who's doing the speaking. Then there's the listener, the one who is hearing all of these tales be told. And then, more often than not, there are those who are being talked about. And for the last few weeks, I've just mulled over that, that that's got to be the three sides of it. The one doing the talking, the one listening, who's giving place, who's having an open door to the gossip, and then those who are being gossiped about. There's just three sides to it, right? But the more I thought about it, the more I got to a place that there's four sides to it. All of those first three are on this horizontal playing field. The fourth one is how God views it. If you miss everything else I say, don't miss these verses. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 says this, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, the seventh one, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Pastor Chad said this this morning, that how can God be just, but also the justifier? And we often, we can't wrap our minds around these different aspects and these attributes of God. But yes, God is holy. Yes, God is just. Yes, he is righteous. Yes, he's also gracious, loving, merciful, forgiving. But let's not forget just how holy our God is. Let's not forget that God hates sin. We, we've come up with these sayings in Christianity today uh, to, to hate the sin and love the sinner. And I think we've fallen too much into the loving the sinner part that we forget to hate the sin part. Or we find these sins that we can hate, and we can hate them very proudly. We can hate certain sins. We can talk and, and, and brag on certain sins that we can, we can stand so strong against certain sins. But certain other sins we just don't care about. 
But at the very core of what tail bearing is, I think there are six aspects or six of the seven things that God hates. And even I think you could stretch it to say all seven of the things that God hates are tied up and wrapped up in tail bearing. A proud look when you're looking down your nose at someone saying, I'm going to go talk about them. I can't believe that they would do this. Or did you hear what they did? Or did you see where they went? Or did you hear the things that they're doing? And we're having this proud look like we are in some place that we can cast the stone. Or then uh, uh, a lying tongue. At the very nature of what tail bearing is, that's what we are doing. We're going about lying. Yes, there might be some truth in the gossip we're spreading, but at the very core of it, it's lying with a prejudice to sow false, uh, uh, false information on someone else or to put someone else in your negative prejudice light. It's lying at its core. A proud look, a lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. This is the one that I, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe not. A, a lot of people, when they interpret this verse, they want to say, well, let's look at the abortion rates. That's hands that have shed innocent blood. But do you know if you hate your neighbor in your heart, the Bible says that you've committed murder already? So how much innocent blood have you shed by your tongue? In heart, verse 18, in heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Isn't that tail bearing? In my heart, I'm devising these wicked imaginations. I'm going to go start spreading things to you, Brian. You should, have you ever sat on that side of the church, Brian? Let me tell you some things about over there, okay? It's in my heart that I'm just going to start sowing these mischievous thoughts, these evil deeds, these wicked things. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. The tail bearer, he's going from place to place carrying the same message back and forth, back and forth. He's being swift about it. Have you ever caught yourself as soon as you find out a piece of information you want to run to somebody and tell them? God help us. Those are feet that are swift and running to mischief, to evil, to wickedness. God help us. God hates that. Verse 16, these six things doth the Lord hate. It's not that, oh, those are, those are kind of bad. He hates these things. A false witness that speaketh lies. That's a talebearer. They're speaking lies. I heard so-and-so said such and such about so-and-so. So it's through the grapevine, it's come down to you, and now you're telling somebody else, is there any truth in what you're saying? Someone that's speaking lies. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. Look around you. We are the brethren. We are the family of God. I, I don't know where it's at. It just came to my mind. But there's a passage in the New Testament where Paul's talking about the body. We're not the head. Christ is the head. But some of us are an arm or a foot or a different part of the body. Would you cut off your own foot? But yet we do that when we tell tales, when we gossip. Don't care so much what I think about it. But what God specifically said, those are seven things that he hates. And they can all be found wrapped up in tail bearing. And so let's talk about the tail bearer. I just want to go to a few places in the Bible where the word tail bearer is used. The Bible says, the first thing let's notice is the instruction against tailbearing. The instruction against tailbearing, it's in the book of Leviticus, the book of Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus 19, verse 16 says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand up against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. But that first part, thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. The instruction against tailbearing, it's very clear. Don't do it. Is that clear enough? If it said nothing else in the Bible about tailbearing, is that enough for us as Christians, as the brethren, as the church of the living God? Is that enough for us to stop? Is that enough? It's not hard to understand the Bible. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. The instruction against talebearing. Simple. Don't do it. 
Don't do it. The second thing I see, the integrity of tailbearing. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Back to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 11. Do not worry. I will finish on time. Everybody can go out of here. If anybody still likes me at the end, we can go to Dairy Queen. You can get me Dairy Queen. If not, I'm going home getting chips and queso. Proverbs 11, the integrity of tailbearing. Proverbs 11, verse 13, the Bible says, A tailbearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. A tailbearer revealeth secrets. So let's look right now at the integrity of this tailbearer. He has none. There's no integrity with the tailbearer. You tell them something, they're going to go reveal it. They're going to go publish it. They're going to go spread it abroad. That is their nature. They have no integrity. If you are a tailbearer, you have no integrity. You're very you're just going to go and spread it about. You're going to go keep revealing the things that have been told to you. Things that maybe have been told to you in confidence, things that maybe you found out that you shouldn't have found out about, but you're going to go tell with your prejudice to somebody else. You're going to go start whispering. You're going to go start slander. You're going to go start spreading these things over and over and over and over again. There's no integrity. You're just a loose lip. So the instruction of tail bearing, don't do it. The integrity of tail bearing, they have none. Now let's look at the injury of tail bearing. Go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. We're just going, I'm going to you, I'm going through tail bearer in the order that the Bible gives them to us. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 8 is the third time in the Bible the word tail bearer is used. Proverbs 18, verse 8, the Bible says this, The words of a tailbearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Look at the injury that tailbearing causes. You are cutting into your brother or sister in Christ. You are cutting into them. You are wounding them. And guess what? The sad thing is, is as I'm telling you this, as I'm preaching this, I'm preaching to myself because guess what? I have been a tailbearer. I have been one that has given place to a tailbearer. And I've probably, I've probably been someone a tailbearer has talked about. I've been on all three aspects, all three sides of the tailbearer. And you know what? When you're the one that's being talked about, how much does it hurt? You ever been there? but yet you'll turn around and go tell tales about somebody else. You've been hurt by it yourself, and yet you'll go and hurt someone else. I'm just going to tell myself, okay? A couple weeks ago, I was frustrated. I was upset about something. Somebody asked me. It was Johnny Drotty. He asked me what was going on. I started to tell him, and he went, ah, la, 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 I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear, and he walked out of the room that we were in. Thank you for that, Johnny. That's all it takes for it to stop. Sean, there was a couple years ago, I think it was the time that I was working on this message for the very first time. You and I were coming out of the prayer and we were walking down that middle aisle. We were talking about something and you stopped and you said, just forget it. Let's go to church. Thank you for that. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Have you ever been injured by tailbearing? Have you ever thought about how much injuring you are doing when you are tailbearing? You are wounding your own. You are tearing apart the church of the living God. So the instruction of tailbearing, don't do it. The integrity of it, there is none. The injury of it, all of us have been hurt by someone who said something, whether there be truth to it or not. And I'm sure all of us, if we think about it, we've done some injuring ourselves. Look at the influence of tail bearing. Move forward to Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs 20, verse number 19, tells us, He that goeth about as a tail bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So the integrity... Proverbs 11, 13 told us a tail bearer reveals secrets. Proverbs 20, verse 19 repeats that. It tells us a tail bearer reveals secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. 
If you think about those who tailbear, those who gossip, you get around them, they will flatter you with their lips. Their influence over you is they're flattering you. I'm going to build you up. I'm going to tell you all great things about you because, because you would never do me wrong. I'm going to build you up to this great pedestal and you're an amazing person. And they gain you over by their influence and their flattering lips. But look at what the verse just said. It says, he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. That's the warning of the talebearer. But guess what? He says, therefore, because they go about revealing secrets, don't meddle with them that, have flatter, that flattereth with his lips. Their influence is to gain you over and to gossip about you or to gossip with you, to tailbear to you, to spread these things to you. And can I just tell you something? If they gossip with you, they are going to gossip about you. Mark it down. The people you are gossiping with are going to go about and they're going to gossip about you. Every time. Every time. Their influence is to gain you over and then stab you in the back. That's a tail bearer. Proverbs 26, where we started. The fifth place the word tail bearer is used in the Bible. It's used twice here in Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26, this is the interaction with tail bearing. This is the interaction that we have with tail bearing. Proverbs 26, verse 20 says, let's go up. Let's go up to verse 17. Verse 17 says, He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. I have three dogs. If I were to take them by the ear and pull them in a direction, they would yelp and they would cry and they would, they would whelp at me even though they are a dog that I love, even though they love me. If I were to grab them by the ear and start pulling them and doing something, they would whelp, they would cry out to me. They would maybe even try to bite me. When you go about meddling with strife that doesn't belong to you, you're asking for trouble. You're going to get bit. You are going to get hurt. Verse 20 says, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a continuous man to kindle strife. So the picture here is you keep adding wood to the fire to keep it going. You keep telling the tales to keep the strife going. You keep telling the gossip to keep the strife going. Only by pride cometh contention is what the Bible says. You keep adding to the fire. You keep adding to it. You keep letting it keep going. You keep, you keep uh, it says, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The contentious man keeps adding to the strife. He keeps it going. Says the words of a talebearer, it's a, re a repetition of the injury of tailbearing. The words of a tailbearer are as wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. So how is this the interaction of tailbearing? You know what you have to do? It's what you did back there. What you did that day you walked out of the room, said, I don't want to hear it. That's it. I saw a picture that was a line of matches lined up. And you strike a match and you light the first match and all of the matches that are stacked right next to it are going to catch the fire. But then I saw a picture of a line of matches and you just remove one match and you light them, it's gonna stop where the one has stopped, where the one has been removed. It's this picture, when we were kids we had dominoes. Do you ever have dominoes chained? You stacked the dominoes up, you didn't do that? You're not a loser like me? Somebody who had dominoes, okay, Drew, you probably had dominoes. And so we stack all those dominoes up. You just set the first domino in motion. It'll knock them all down. You know what the picture here is? Remove one. Remove that one domino or don't have it close enough to the next one. It's not going to hit it. It's not going to keep going. The fire is not going to keep burning when you remove that one match. The interaction that we as a church need to have with tail bearing is just stop. Just stop. We can keep it going, keep kindling the strife by going here and there, back there and over here, getting on Facebook, calling somebody. Did you hear what happened? Did you see what happened? Driving across. There are church members who will drive across town just to see what so-and-so is doing. 
and be texting about it. God help us. Shame on us. We can keep it going or we can stop and let this fire die. There are some fires that need to die. There are some coals that need to be put out. The fire of tailbearing is one of them. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Tailbear is not used here. But we're going to look at some things that are used here. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him and as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, and the... Uh, and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Verse 25, look at this. Wherefore, putting away lying, let every man sp uh, uh, put away lying, speak every man's truth with his neighbor, for we are members one with another. Verse 29, let no, corruption, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving, uh, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Pastor Chad alluded to it this morning. It's a very simple principle in Ephesians chapter 2. The Bible tells us, and you hath he quickened who are dead in sins, trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom we also had our conversation, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of our, our mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as as others, that's what we used to be before we got saved. Amen. We used to be a sinner, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he's quickened us, he's made us alive together with him. By grace are you saved. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then it says this, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. You know what he's saying? He says, you used to have your works in the old sinful things of this world, but God did a work on the cross of Calvary to save you, to make you a workmanship created in him. He's ordained that you would walk before him, that you would be a perfect creation for him. If God took you from that because of the cross to a new creation, to a new workmanship in him, then you should be putting those things away. You know what repentance is? Repentance is putting your faith in Christ, but it's turning from these things. Repentance is turning from one thing and turning to another. Repentance means you turn your back on those things, not go camp out in them and keep doing them. Proverbs 6, these six things doth the Lord hate, hate, hate. Every single Christian should go home and memorize Proverbs 6, verse 16 through 19. Because God hates it. And if God hates it, we as his children should hate it too. Should kill it with a malice. Put it away from us. We're hurting each other. There's a list in 1 Corinthians 6 of all the, the, the types of people that cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And Paul says, and such were some of you. But you're washed, you're justified, you're sanctified. God saved you? Goes on at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 to say, what? Know you not that you're bought with a price? That price was the precious blood of Christ. You're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Here's the challenge tonight. I don't know where you're at in this whole tailbearing thing, whether you have become an open door and an open ear to let someone keep whispering things to you. Maybe you're the whisperer who's going about. Maybe you're one that's been told tales about and it's hurt. This altar's open. You can get help. You maybe need to grab somebody in this auditorium and say, would you forgive me for the things I've said? There should be a lot of people tonight 
that regardless of what anybody who's looking on sees you at the altar, there should be a lot of people on this altar because it doesn't matter so much, Chandler, if you or I know about what's going on. There's an omniscient God who knows everything. And you should be fearful of him because he's a holy God. Nothing less than holiness. Nothing less. And so let's stand to our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. And and this is the invitation. If you're wrapped up in tail bearing, whether you are the one telling the tales, whether you are the one giving an open ear to it, maybe there's some people who need to get on this altar and say, God, forgive me. God, help me. God, I need to do better. God, I need to shut this out of my life. Maybe there's some people who need to come. Just grab a brother in Christ and ask, ask forgiveness. There should be some reconciliation. We ought not to be giving place to that. But maybe you're in here tonight and you say, Pastor Tyler, you know that makes sense. Like I'm never even convicted of those things. Maybe you should question your salvation. If you're not saved tonight, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, that's the first place to start. God, we love you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. God, I pray that you'd help us. God, that we'd get right. God, that we would come to you. Get the sin out of our lives. Lord, that we'd live holy. Told us to be holy for I am holy. God, I pray that you'd help us to do that. God, move in in a mighty way. Move in a way that only you can. God, we love you and we pray this in Christ's name.